Hi, and welcome back to Beans and Bezels. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty interesting microbrand watch. This is the Seals Model A. Seals is based in the United States and has been around for the last five to six years. I've kept an eye on these watches for a while, but only recently was I able to get hold of a Model A at a pretty good price. Just a quick note that this is the Model A and not their most recent offering, the Model A5. I will try my best to highlight differences between the two throughout this video. Let's start by taking a look at the case, which is probably what has you interested in this watch to begin with. When you first look at this watch, you can't help but immediately draw similarities between the Model A and some of Gerald Genta's popular designs. This watch reminds me most of the IWC Ingenieur, and I, I say that as a compliment because I really like the Ingenieur reference 3239. When you pick up the Model A and put it on your wrist, you quickly understand how it has managed to set itself apart from all the other Genta watch wannabes, and to an extent established its own identity within the world of microbrand watches. The case perfectly defines the overall aggressive wrist presence of this watch, with its straight edges and dramatically angled surfaces. The entire case is brushed, except for the sides of the bezel, which are polished. The dial sits at the bottom of this roughly 3mm tall bezel, giving the dial an immersive sense of depth. The whole bezel and case design screams of the 1970s, and I love it. As I mentioned before, I bought this watch pre-owned. The previous owner of this watch purchased it from Seals and had it for a year before selling it to me, so it has been worn and put through its paces. You can see this clearly from the scuffs and scratches on the watch case. But the watch has held up very well for an everyday piece. The case elegantly extends into its integrated metal bracelet, which can also be swapped out for their leather straps. Unfortunately, this design won't allow for third-party straps. I don't see this as a problem because I believe most of the appeal comes from the case and integrated bracelet design, and they do have a few good leather strap options for those that really want something else. The crown guards are very similar to the IWC Ingenieur, but they work perfectly with this case design. One point of criticism is that the crown is a bit too short and not the easiest to grip and adjust. A slightly thicker crown might have resulted in a more ergonomic experience. In terms of the overall case design, the Model A and the Model A5 appear to be identical. The website lists the A5 as being roughly half a millimeter slimmer, but from experience this half millimeter isn't really going to give you a drastically different wrist experience. Even though this watch is likely to be defined by the case and bracelet design, the dial to me is the best aspect of this watch. The entire dial has been created by someone who knows design. The difference in depth between the glass and the dial is elegantly balanced by a clear and visible chaptering that directs your attention to the beautiful vertically brushed slate dial that sits below it. The seconds hand extends just a little bit over the chaptering, making it extremely easy to read the seconds hand to a high degree of accuracy. Let me give you a closer look at this as it is really well executed. There are high polished metal hour markers that are applied to the dial and lack any kind of lube. The hour and minute hands are skeletonized with an extremely small amount of BGW9 Super Luminova applied to it. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of this was considering it is almost invisible in the dark with an extremely faint glow just for a few minutes. I would have preferred that the loom have been removed completely and the open worked hands left as is. The Model A5 has been updated to have loomed hands. In my opinion, the seconds hand on the A5 looks quite ridiculous and is pretty much a deal breaker for me. The vertically brushed slate dial on this watch is gorgeous and quite a rare phenomenon for watches in this category. Unfortunately, it appears that the rest of the community didn't share these sentiments because the Model A5 appears to only have plain dial offerings. The date window has also been removed on the A5. The bracelet links help this watch distance itself from the Genta-esque wannabes. Personally, I would have liked to see more angular surfaces and straight lines on the bracelet, but instead each individual link is smooth and slightly curved. It does look good and the watch is able to pull off these oversized links, but as with a lot of integrated bracelets, the articulation on the fixed end links is quite poor. On my 6 and a quarter inch wrist, this watch is at its minimum wrist size and barely conforms to my wrist completely. Those with 6.5 inch wrists and larger shouldn't have a problem, but I cannot recommend this bracelet to anyone with a wrist size of under 6 inches. It is unfortunate that the end links were allowed to articulate so poorly, because if they were allowed to rotate by just another 10 degrees, it would allow the whole bracelet to conform to smaller wrists such as mine. You can see it here on my wrist. It doesn't look too bad, and depending on how you like to wear your watches, this might be okay. 
Moving on to the clasp. The clasp is a bit ordinary for a watch that costs $800, so it is a bit of a letdown and feels a little janky, but it does have four micro adjustment slots, which definitely earn some points in my book. This watch has a Miyota 9015, and I've had pretty good experiences with this movement in the past. At the full retail price of $800, it is hard to digest, but at the pre-owned price of roughly $400, this is an easy win. The crown and stem do feel a bit delicate. I would have liked to see a more robust crown support design, and overall this felt a bit lacking and more like a watch in the $300 to $400 price range, rather than an $800 watch. I've logged the accuracy of this watch over a 3 day period and observed an average accuracy of plus 8 seconds per day. Given that this watch has been used for a year, a slight deviation is understandable. I suspect if regulated this watch can hold on to tighter accuracy ranges. As mentioned before, the watch sits pretty wide on my wrist. To begin with, the lug to lug width is 51mm, but if you factor in the poorly articulating links, you're looking at closer to 53 to 54mm at its extreme. But surprisingly, it doesn't look too bad on my six and a quarter inch skinny wrists. The height of the case is roughly 12 and a quarter inches, so it sits pretty low and doesn't look awkward at all. Overall, this watch feels like quality, and certain aspects of this watch appear to have been meticulously and painstakingly designed by someone who really understands watches. Unfortunately, there are some oversights in this design, such as the poorly articulating end links and the impractical loom on the hands. On the wrist, this watch is a convincing substitute for something like an IWC Ingenieur. It has the silhouette and the hefty design to pull that off, coupled with the well-designed and well-executed dial. To conclude, if I was to pick between the Model A and the Model A5, I would definitely pick the Model A, and I recommend buying pre-owned instead of retail since the price does drop significantly. Once again, thanks for watching and be sure to check out the review link below.